Welcome back to the Stanford IR video lecture series. We're going to move on to and review some common skills that are needed in IR as a trainee. So one of the most important things you can do is maintain the integrity of the back table. In general, you want to keep the table neat, clean, and in order. This includes keeping the sharps in one area, organizing the rest of the equipment needed for the case that's on the table, and keeping the table clean and dry. You want to try to anticipate the next step in the procedure and have that ready to go. I'm going to show a brief video of what this would mean in a vertebroplasty case. So for example, on this table, we've got all our sharps up here in the top left. So here's our lidocaine, here's another syringe or a needle, a couple of other needles. This is a set for a vertebroplasty, so there's a vertebroplasty device here. And if your sharp does not have an open tip, such as um, a scalpel, as you can see the scalp, the um, sharp part is on the inside. Since it's a sharp, you want to keep it up here with the rest of the sharps. So that way you have all your sharps in one area. Scissors, you should also put up here. And then this, be careful, make sure you look at the tip of everything, because even though this is in a plastic um, shield right now, it actually has a sharp tip. So that would be a sharp. So you want to keep that up here as well. And then the other thing you can do is just kind of keep everything organized. So these are all the plastic clamps, so have them all in one area. These are the other clamps, have them together. This is the equipment for the vertebral plasty, so you want to try to keep that together. These are some 2 proline sutures, so keep these here for the end of the case. Keep the markers on the side. Put all your syringes here. And keep the table clean and dry, so anything wet or used, you want to throw that away and then keep the, the rest of the table kind of as dry as you can. And this is sort of how you can be most helpful um, in whatever case you're in. All right, now that we've reviewed the back table, I'm going to review two important concepts with IR equipment. You want to keep all needles, dilators, catheters, and in general, any objects with a hollow lumen flushed once they are removed for the patient and when you give them to the primary operator before they use them. This will remove any thrombus or debris that's within the object so that it does not get injected into the patient. In addition, you want to keep all syringes full with the appropriate fluid and keep them labeled. For the syringes with contrast, ask your attending or fellow what proportion of contrast to saline they would like mixed in the syringes. This will vary from case to case, and it will vary depending on what you are doing at that specific step in the procedure. Another important thing you always want to do is whenever you prepare a syringe or tubing, always remove all bubbles. I'm going to play a short video now to show you a couple ways to make sure that all bubbles are removed from syringes. So whenever you fill this up with any kind of fluid and you bring it back to your team, make sure that you've got all the bubbles out of here out. So I'm gonna put some bubbles in here, and then I'll show you guys, there's a couple different techniques to getting them out. So the most common way is go ahead and turn the syringe upside down, and air will always float to the top, right? So if you have it here, the air will go to the top, and you just kind of push it all out until the, the very tip has fluid in it. But now as you can see, there's another bubble here, right? So this one's kind of tough to get out. So something you can do is you can flick the syringe and as you see that bubble got out by flicking it. So you got all the air up here out by pushing everything to the top and then get all the bubbles around out just by kind of flicking them. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but just get the biggest bubbles you can out. So that's two techniques to get bubbles out. There's another one. So I'll go ahead and draw more air in here. So with your left hand, hold the bottom of the syringe like this, so you have support on the top and on the bottom. With your other hand, go ahead and get as much air as you can out. Then put pressure on the top, and then pull down on the bottom. And then when you've pulled down, go ahead and release the top. And as you can see, that made a nice column here of air. 
which you can then get all of it out and most of the bubbles on the side should be gone. So that's how you can get all the bubbles out of syringes. You never want to give your team a syringe with bubbles. And if you're injecting anything into the patient, let's say there's tubing here and it's going into the patient here, don't ever hold syringes like this when you inject because air will go to the top and that's the first thing that will go inside of a patient. So always hold the syringe like this and in general air will flow this way and when you inject the first thing that will go out is fluid. Okay, this, the second thing you might do sometimes is hook up tubing for your team and you might hook up some kind of fluid to the end. So let's say just for educational purposes you want to bring your team back some tubing with saline in it. Don't ever bring them the tubing like this because it's got all these bubbles in it and then when they inject it'll go into the patient. So find an area in the back where you can put fluid. So let's just say find this bowl and then go ahead and push water through here or saline or whatever is in here and get all the bubbles out. So now as you can see all the bubbles inside the tubing are out and this is how you would bring a tube up to your team. You never want to have bubbles inside tubing. And if you do see small bubbles that you can't get out, you can actually flick tubing as well and that'll help the bubbles um, get out of the system too. All right, we're now going to review how to use a couple of the common tools in IR, which include the blade, forceps, and clamps. I'm going to show a few videos of basic handling. So this is an example of a blade. Okay, so there's lots of ways you could potentially hold this. Some people will grab it like this. Some people will kind of try to grab it underneath. Really the correct way that it's taught is imagine it's a pencil. So you just pick it up like a pencil. This will release the sharp end. And then you really want to hold it like a pencil. This will give you the most control. And then you can rest your fingers underneath on the patient's skin to give you some um, something to hold your hand on and then if you can imagine for a port let's say we're placing let's say we're incising right there you rest the palm of your hand on the patient here hold it like a pencil and then you can kind of make your incision as such through the patient okay make sure whenever you use a sharp to put this back or notify people if there's an open sharp on the table these are serrated ats and forceps, and you really want to hold them kind of like you do a pencil. And you can lift up skin like this and open it up if you're doing sutures. So these pickups you'll notice at the ends are not sharp, but some ats and pickups can have very sharp, small teeth at the end. And you have to be careful because if you're picking up skin and you grab it too tightly, you can actually macerate the skin. So this is an example of Kelly clamps. So as you can see, these are the curved Kelly clamps. So they've got a curve at the end. And they've got these little teeth here. And typically, you know, you use these kind of like scissors by putting them here. But something that can be really helpful to do, this is a little bit of an advanced level technique if you have time to learn this, is to learn how to use these by palming them. So you would be able to open and close the Kelly clamps without necessarily putting your fingers through the loops. So usually just go ahead and place it in your palm like this. Have your index finger here, palm, uh, your thumb right here, and then use your palm to open and close them. And this helps a lot with suturing. So you can imagine if you have a suture here, and if you can palm the instrument, you can get it through the skin, then you can release it go to the other end, grab it again as it comes out the other end of the skin, close it, and you can bring it through the skin. And imagine if you have your fingers through it, you'll have the needle here, you'll go through the skin, but now you're kind of stuck because your fingers are inside and you can't really go any more than that. So at that point, you then have to release, take your fingers out and put them back in to go ahead and finish. But 
if you just palm the instrument, you can just grab it and you can make a full 380, 360 degree maneuver. All right, so we're going to move on and discuss how to handle wires. We'll start with three important concepts. First, always hold a wire with your palms facing down, and I'll show you what this looks like in a video. Second, always hold a wire, especially those that are hydrophilic, with your fingernails for good traction and stability. And thirdly, whenever you remove a wire or you prepare a wire for the primary operator, Make sure this wire is wet, especially if it is a hydrophilic wire, because if it is not wet, it can become very sticky and difficult to use. In addition, you can get debris and thrombus formation on the wire, so you want to make sure it's clean and wet whenever it is removed from a patient or whenever you hand it to the primary operator to place back into the patient. So if you would imagine this is the catheter coming out of the patient, and this is the wire coming out of the catheter. So this is something you'll frequently be asked to do. Make sure you're always um, hand over hand. Don't ever hold a wire like this or John Louie's gonna slap your hands. So you're holding the wire like this and they ask you to take it out. So the hand over hand method is you hold this, you hold um, right hand here, left hand here next to the catheter. And as you pull out, you rotate around, grab another piece here, rotate around again, grab it here again just make sure you're holding on tightly in general you should always use your fingernails don't use your hand because the wire will slip especially if it's hydrophilic and then you just keep repeating this and then eventually it will be out of the patient and then you'll have the wire here once you have it here you can secure it in place by taking the stiff end because if you just let this go in the bowl, it'll fly out. You can take the stiff end, put it underneath once, underneath twice, and now you can hold it wherever you want and it won't fly. And then you put this in the back of the bowl. The other thing you can do if you don't wanna roll this over, because this means you have to undo it, which can also cause the wire to fly everywhere, is you can take the original casing that this is in, and then if you imagine, if we take this wire out, here and then let's say this wire came out you have the original casing you can go ahead and place it back in here and then you can just put it all the way in and then once you've got it all the way in you can go ahead and put the casing back in the bowl Another thing you can do to simultaneously wipe down the wire and put it back in the casing is with the hand that you're holding the casing. Let's imagine that this is a wet piece of uh, gauze. You can hold this wet piece of gauze like this, right here, and then hold the casing with your palm, and then place the wire inside with the wet piece of gauze there, and then as it goes in, the gauze will clean the wire. So you're sort of cleaning it while placing it back in the casing at the same time, and then it'll be ready next time you have to take it out. You can do the same when you take it out if it's been sitting in the casing for a while. Get a nice wet piece of gauze or a lint pad, hold that here, and then as you take the wire out, when the attending tells you they need it, it'll be going through that wet gauze, and it'll be nice and, um, clean, especially if it's a uh, wire that becomes sticky when it's not wet. So there are two more important concepts to review with regard to using wires. As you saw in the video, wires can be very long. When they are not curled up in the bowl and they're being used in a case, try and keep the back end as straight as possible to maintain the integrity of the wire and facilitate catheter movement over the wire. Try and visualize the concept of the wire as a rail, and when you're placing a catheter over it, it really needs to stay straight so that the catheter can smoothly advance over the wire. Secondly, try and keep an eye on the back end of the wire. Since wires are so long, it is easy to hit other assistants or to get the wire off of the sterile field, in which case it'll be contaminated. I'm also going to show a video now of a small trick I learned with the tip of the wire. 
so you can imagine if you have a wire like this with a J tip, it would be difficult to insert this directly into a catheter. So there's a trick to make that easier. So you grab the end. So here's your wire. You grab the end before the curved part, hold it here with your other three fingers, use your nails, and push forward, you can straighten out the wire and now you can place it through a catheter. So you can do the same thing with an inquire wire, is if you're having trouble getting into it at the catheter, grab it like this, these fingers go around, and then push forward, grab it real tight here and push forward and you see how it'll straighten out and now you can insert it much more easier. If you relax it, the wire relaxes, grab it with your nails right here and then push forward and tighten these hands back, okay?